Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is, this is still Saturday, March the 7th, but now it is 8.48 p.m. It is getting late. Um, I was just listening to Daniel from Logic Before Authority, and uh, it was pretty interesting, um, given some numbers and some what-ifs, and pretty much telling us if you didn't have vaccinations and get exposed to this COVID-19 and you're using 5G cell phone uh, towers, whatever, you'd probably be okay. <laughs> anyway, it was pretty interesting, but it, it, it was kind of lengthy. But please be quiet. Okay, I have been meaning to do this uh, since early this afternoon after I got up from my nap. I prayed, you know, to the Father, to the Lord, Holy Spirit. Buddy, shush. Shush. Buddy, shush. Must be somebody in the hall. Okay, if, please ignore my dog. All right, anyway, after I prayed a little while, I said, Lord, give me something uh, in your word that will encourage me, and maybe I can encourage others also. So I just opened up, like I've been doing lately, and I came to Ezra, and one was over here, and two was over here, and I kind of went to two first. I thought it was for Ezra two, but it was... Uh, had a whole lot of numbers um, I don't even remember now but it was like I don't I'm not getting anything out of this I don't think this is it so I went to one now as I read this I want something going to come to your mind I'll bet you and go ahead and type it in the comments if you know what I'm talking about alright what does this remind you of and remember, history repeats itself. That's a little clue. Okay, Ezra 1 starts out with Cyrus's proclamation. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah... So this was prophesied by Jeremiah. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he sent a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put... My poor baby's having such a hard time walking. It's so sad. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry. All right. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he sent a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia. I want to stop here just a minute. Just a time out and just say, remember your prayers to ask it, asking the Lord to please stir up in somebody's heart that they need to be saved. Okay, to open their eyes, to open their ears. You see the Lord, you see what the Lord can do? Now listen. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. You hear that? Cyrus, he's not even a Jew, and... But he appointed him to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever there is among you 
of all his people. May his God be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. Every survivor, at whatever place he may live, let the men of that place support him with silver and gold, with goods and cattle, together with a free will offering for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. Now, this man's a total pagan. And he heard from the Lord to make him do this. Now, this section's called Holy Vessels Restored. Then the heads of fathers, um, excuse me, I was checking my position. <laughs> then the heads of fathers, the fathers is plural with the apostrophe, households, the fathers, households of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites arose even everyone whose spirit God had stirred to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. Now, where are the Israelites? They must have been scattered, if I remember right, when Jerusalem was destroyed and burnt down, these ones were taken as slaves by Nebuchadnezzar, but apparently the others were either killed or they scattered to the north. The ten tribes of Israel that made up Israel. That just came to me. All those about them encouraged them with articles of silver, with gold, with goods, with cattle, and with valuables. Aside from all that was given as a free will offering. Also, King Cyrus brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and put in the house of his gods. And Cyrus, king of Persia, had them brought out by the hand of Mithridath, the treasurer, and he counted them out to Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. Now, this was their number. Thirty gold dishes, a thousand silver dishes, 29 duplicates, 30 gold bowls, 410 silver bowls of a second kind, and a thousand other articles. You see how numbers must be important to the Lord, or why would he have had the exact amount of bowls Gold, 30 gold, 410 silver of a second kind, and a thousand other articles. You know what I'm saying? So numbers clearly are important to the Lord. All right, this is Ezra 1, 11, verse 11. All the articles of gold and silver numbered 5,400. Shez Bazaar brought them all up with the exiles who went up from Babylon to Jerusalem. What does that remind you of? I immediately thought of the Exodus. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we are supposed to cough into our elbows now. It kind of hurts, but it's easy to do with a coat on. <laughs> it's not so bad. <coughs> 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 
Just get in the habit of it. Okay. So when I read this, I thought, somebody had asked me, who was it? Somebody either in an email or in a comment, do you think his, do you think history will repeat itself and we will be go like in the exodus like all of a sudden in one night or something like that I don't remember but anyhow when I read this that Cyrus had I had forgotten about this completely that Cyrus had not only let these people go he had the neighbors give them articles of gold and silver, cattle and other goods so they could have something to survive with. That's exactly what happened in the Exodus with Moses. The, the, the last plague of the firstborn being killed caused the people to just say, here, here, take this, take it, you know, they were supposed to ask the Jewish women, the Israelites, ask the neighbors, can, can you give us some things that we can survive with, or however they worded it, and they gave them all kinds of gold and silver and cattle and goods. So I just thought, this does indicate history repeats itself. And a lot of times in the Bible, prophecies or things that happen don't just happen once or twice. Sometimes it's three times. And a lot of times that third time is for the end times, end of times. And I wish that offhand I could think of another one, another example, but... I don't think there's a whole lot of them, but I can't think of one right off. But I just thought that that might encourage you that the Lord led me to read this that about something very much like the Exodus where, where the children of God received their freedom finally. And we will receive ours too, brothers and sisters. We will be free of this evil world of things going on, even though we will be protected against them. No matter what you see or hear, and for whatever you do, don't believe the mainstream media. We, you can't believe their numbers and even if they're worse than, than what they're saying, they will not, this plague will not touch you if you believe it, okay? If you have doubt that God can do, do that, then I'm, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. It, everything that has to do with God takes faith, okay? Faith and the belief, I guess belief and faith are kind of the same thing. If you believe it's true, you have faith in it, right? So anyway, I'll end it here. And I hope that encouraged you some more this day. That we're going to be out of here soon. I know that between um, some of what other people are getting and... I just have a really good feeling. I know that doesn't say much to you. Like, well, what's a good feeling to us? But uh, I'm, Maybe I'm just hoping real hard, huh? It's all right. It's our blessed hope. The rapture is our blessed hope. All right. So I plead the blood of Jesus over this. And um, this video, myself, my computer... The internet connection I pray it'll go up and I pray uh, plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you and your devices 
and your internet connections. And remember, cut off your Wi-Fi at night, okay? Before you go to bed, when you're done watching your videos and you're ready to pray, you turn off your power. I have mine all attached to a power strip, so you just flip that little switch. Or there's a way you can push a button on Wi-Fi itself if you know how to do that do that either way everybody should get in the habit of cutting off your wi-fi whenever you're done using it all right even if it's for an hour for meal times make a habit of it let's reduce the amount of wi-fi coming through our air into our heads who knows what it's doing well the government knows we don't need it we don't need it going on continually. And um, remember to cut off your cell phones whenever you're through with them. Unless you're a businessman that relies on phone calls to make a living, you, you should turn off your cell phone. And even they should take breaks. Cut them off. People can leave messages. And you can get back to them when you're done taking a break. And cut it off at night. Okay? People can leave messages at night. All right, so with that I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.